How the Orange fare, despite their recent end of their winning streak. NBC 3 News at 11 starts right now. This is NBC 3 News at 11. Good evening, everyone. I'm Megan Coleman, Madison, Washington tonight for the President's State of the Union address. We will go live to him in just a moment. But first, new at 11 tonight, we get the latest on the President's speech from Mr. Craig Speaker, Boswell. Mr. Vice President, members of Congress. The President of the United States. President Obama delivered his State of the Union address to a new Republican majority in Congress, outlining his plans to boost the middle class. Let's do more to restore the link between hard work and growing opportunity for every American. The president wants to cut taxes for the middle class and raise them for the wealthiest Americans. He also wants to make community college free for students who keep their grades up and expand paid sick leave for workers. If you truly believe you could work full time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, try it. If not, vote to give millions of the hardest working people in America a raise. Republicans say they're willing to find common ground, but have already dismissed a tax and spend approach. Now we're going to try to do the things that we think will make Amer America a better place. Hopefully, some of the things that we enact, he will agree to. The White House invited 22 guests to sit with the First Lady, many middle-class Americans helped by the president's policies. Also there, Alan Gross, released after five years in a Cuban prison, and astronaut Scott Kelly, who is preparing to spend a year in space. Now to our own Matt Mulcahy, who is live in Washington right now with reaction to the president's <clears throat> speech. Matt, good evening. Well, Megan, it's just been a memorable ride here in Washington. Just about 10 minutes ago from the very balcony where we're standing now, we watched the presidential motorcade head back down Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House after what's being considered a successful evening for the President of the United States, giving this State of the Union address and what will be his penultimate address. Only one more left next year after his two terms in office. So he's in the final two years, and that was part of the theme he struck tonight, that it was time for him to get a couple more things done, to work with this Republican-controlled uh, Senate and House now and try to accomplish, uh, for example, something for the middle class, to give a tax credit to the middle class, or to work on better broadband access for small towns and rural areas, or also this idea of, of, of working on uh, global affairs, uh, concern about Afghanistan, Iraq, ISIS, and the growing threat from ISIS in the Middle East were part of the agenda and the tone that he talked about today. And by the end of the speech, though, he was talking a bit on a bipartisan basis, hoping that he could listen to some Republican ideas, work together and see if something can get done with uh, the Democrat controlling the White House and, of course, the Republicans controlling Congress. So joining me now is freshman Congressman John Katko, who was here for his first State of the Union message. And, and Congressman, what was it like to be under that dome tonight in this really special occasion? Well, Matt, it was a high honor, of course. I just, my first time being at a State of the Union and the sense of history that you feel when you're in that room and then a the sense of duty that comes along with it really struck home to me, so it was really an honor. What, what is that moment like when the president enters the room, he's announced the, the, the applause breaks out? It seems to be such a, a great moment of uh, national unity, at least at that instant. It is. I mean, you're honoring the office. I mean, you can disagree with the man, but you're honoring the office. And what struck me about it, he's just a normal human being, just like you and I, and uh, he's in an extraordinary situation. So that kind of struck me, too, seeing the person, instead of just seeing this figure on TV all the time or in the news. So it was... Uh, it, it was it's humbling, it was an honor, and the sense of history was great. What about the politics of tonight? You know, laced within his message, certainly there's some inspiration, some motivation, but then he did, he talked about, he talked about trying to reach across the aisle and, and try to accomplish some things. Do you think that can happen this year? Well, listen, I'm, I'm very hopeful of that, and uh, I came to Congress to try and do just that. And that's why I sat over with Democrats, because I wanted Democrats to maybe learn from me and what my views are, and I'm going to learn from them. But the bottom line is, if his actions are as uh, clear as his words, we're going to have a, we're going to have a good Congress. If they're not, we're going to struggle, but we're going to find out. Yeah, and, and that's still something that needs to be tested, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Congressman Katko, congratulations on being here for your first State of the Union. You have at least one more. I at least one more. That's right. <laughs> and already time, we, as we talked earlier today, where you have to start thinking about re-election, believe it or uh, not. Then let's just enjoy tonight. We got first. some work Sounds to be bad. done, and we got a great view here tonight. Yes, we, we do. Not bad at all. Yeah, Megan, back to you. Oh, just a remarkable night. Matt, thanks so much. NBC3 Chief Meteorologist Wayne Mahar is tracking our forecast. He is here now.